Welcome back folks to another edition of BC Renovation Magazine. In this video I'm building some decks um, and I'm going to show you how I uh, put these together. Uh, stick around. Alright, so this is my back uh, doorstep, porch, deck, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this ended up to be uh, 8 feet by 6 feet and eventually this is going to get covered but uh, this is the, sort of the end product here of you know the basic platform there's going to be skirting and we're going to build a roof on top of this yet at some point in time but uh, you know this is kind of where we're going I want to show you uh, what I've got going around the corner on the main deck and so this this video is going to get quite uh, technical folks so if you're interested in you know how how I'm building these decks uh, you know stick around and uh, you know I'll, I'll show you what, what I've got going on here so this is the main deck now into the into the home and I'm going to show you all the components and how they go together here uh, I've, I've still got this old set of old stairs so you know I've been moving these stairs around this is from the old deck uh, these steps are not going to be here uh, there's going to be new steps built but uh, you know this is basically the location that they're going to be in so this shows you my new plan you know from what the old plan was here where we had the old deck and then the carport beside it so you know now we've got the deck and we have this uh, landscape area it's going to be uh, those pavers at the back and you know the new steps are going to come down onto the pavers and here to screen this old meter shed kind of right along in here is uh, I'll be putting these uh, trellises in here to screen this this thing I've got four of those and that's gonna be another video but I'll show you how I put that together when I get to that point so today I'm working on this deck uh, this deck is 16 feet long and it's nine feet um, you know I could have gone 10 I had to buy 10 foot material but I I'm going with nine because you can see I'm starting to get you know a little bit scrunchy in here so I, you know another foot made would have made quite a difference down here I wanted to make this feel spacious in here so that when you walk through you know and then come up onto the deck it's you're not feeling you know cramped all right so let's get into the technical parts of how i'm how i'm building this deck so i'm using uh two by eight floor joists and two by eights for my beams and uh this is all pressure treated material uh, you know for out outdoor use um this particular material i'm using is treated with a brown stain I'll be putting that same five quarter uh, decking material on top. But I started off with putting a, a, a double two by eight along the house here. Now in, in our uh, area, we have to make the, uh, every, all of these structures have to be self-supporting, which means they can't bear load onto the uh, mobile home itself. They don't want us to do that. so. You can see along here, I've got these uh, four by four posts uh, sitting on these concrete footers. Uh, the posts come up and they hold that two ply uh, little beam that's, that you see there. And we would call that a flush beam. Um, it's, it's, it's not really a beam, but it's kind of like a beam. Now these uh, are just precast. I buy these at Home Depot. Now in our area, you know, we, we don't have much frost. Uh, we might get an inch of frost, you know, in the coldest time in the winter. So we don't have to worry a lot about frost protection. You know, if you're in a climate that has frost, you would do this quite differently. You don't have to probably, you know, drill some kind of pilings or something to get down below the frost. But, you know, here, you know, everything sits on, on the ground. You know, all of our cribs underneath the mobile home, they're just sitting on the ground. And, you know, it, it works well for us here. We don't have to worry about too much about frost, you know, pushing things around and heaving. Um, so yeah, you you might have to do things differently that way. So this uh, this beam here on this side is what holds the deck up on this side, and so we've got uh, a two ply, two by eight here, okay, that stretches the full length. Again, sitting on the four by four posts. Um, and my and my posts are quite close together. And the reason that I did that was because uh, it was a, it's a trade-off. When you do the when you do your span calculations on your beams, you know the, the the bigger your span, the more plies you have to put into the beam. So I'm just going with two ply, 
and that's you know because of the cost of materials uh, you know I, uh, right now it's cheaper to do you know throw in a couple extra of these supports as to you know buying uh, buying another ply of lumber and it you know and it also just sort of gives us uh, you know gives us uh, um, more support and just kind of spreads the load a little bit more which is you know what everybody likes okay so I'm moving along here and I've got uh, you know setting my joists again these are two by eights a lot of people will try and do this with two by sixes uh, two by sixes is not not heavy enough um, I'm putting them at 16 inches on center uh, so this will give us a nice deck that isn't gonna bounce okay and and uh, I still have to fill in this side over here and I just wanted to show you before I got too far along here and so you can see I've got these marked out here and so I'll be filling them along you'll notice that I'm I'm I don't have my joist hangers uh, in place on these um, I install my joist hangers afterwards uh, I find it much easier to do that uh, if you install them ahead of time, it can be hard to get things lined up so that everything's flush and unlined up on the top. All right, and I'm putting this all together with uh, three inch uh, ceramic coated uh, deck screws. Um, these are eight, what are called ACQ uh, screws, which are rated for um, treated material. The uh, wood preservative in this treated material can eat your screws, so you have to use the right screws. All right, so here, you know, we're hanging it off of that two ply two by eight all right and then over here we have it sitting on the two ply two by eight beam okay and then here I'm just you know toe nailing well not nailing but screw it toe nailing screwing it here you know on each side okay and just coming along you know uh, just you know one at a time and we have these uh, diagonal base uh, diagonal pieces in here to uh, keep the keep the thing from racking this way, so this keeps it straight and square. And I'll give you a couple little tips here, so you can see that um, I have cut this back short, so that the butt end of this is not showing. So you can see here how the uh, the end uh, joist you know comes into the home, and we don't have, we're not looking at the butt end. Okay, so we overlap this way instead of uh, you know bringing these out all right and then on this end over here um, I overlap on this way uh, so that you know looking from this side it's a nice clean look my beam I've kept my beam back three quarters of an inch so you know this is part of thinking ahead um, when I put the skirting on the vinyl skirting the vinyl skirting is going to go tuck up underneath this and be, it'll, the front of it will be flush, this will all be flush. The uh, skirting is half an inch thick. Uh, I've left three quarters of an inch here for the, the skirting to slide. And uh, I'll explain more about that, you know, when we get into the skirting. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and carry on with filling these in. And uh, eventually I'm gonna do some time lapse for you here. All right, so I'm a little further along here. I'm starting to apply my decking. And uh, this this decking that we're using here is uh, it's it's uh, five quarter by by six is what it's called. Uh, the five quarter part means it's an inch thick, so the boards you know here are, are an inch thick, and then they're six, so they're five and a half inches wide. Okay, these have a nice little radius edge on them to you know make them look finished. I'm going with a one inch overhang all the way around. So here I've got this board that's been cut. And I got my one inch overhang along the uh, side here. Now these boards on the end here, I'm just letting them go wild. And when I get you know, all of my boards on and get to the other side there, then I will uh, put a line on here with the chalk line uh, at one inch. And then I'll saw these off. Um, and you sort of pick a pattern, you know, to make this look nice. And so what I've done since I've got a 16 foot deck here, I'm going with uh, alternating um with the eight eight foot board in the middle and and then i go with a four foot board on each end of that and then the next row i go with uh two eight foots and join them in the center here 
Okay, so you can kind of see the, the pattern of my boards, how we've got, this is the middle of the deck, and so the eight foot board goes here and here. The next bo board, next row, we've got eight foot board going from the center that way, okay? And that way we're staggering our joints. You always want to stagger your joints. You don't want to line your joints up. So four foot over, we have another, another row of joints. All right, again, this is a six inch board. So with a six inch board, we, we do three, uh, three screws. Uh, rule of thumb is that if you're using a four inch board, you have two screws. Six inch board, you go three screws. Eight inch board, you're gonna go four screws. So for example, you know, our joists are, are uh, uh, eight inch material. So each of those joists has four screws in them. All right, so there you can see on the end, we've got four screws. Uh, you're gonna go, if you had two by tens, yeah, then you'd go five, two by twelves, you'd go six. So that's that's the rule of thumb. And again, we're using uh, these, because it's treated wood, we're using these ceramic coated uh, screws. I'm using uh, two to two and a half inch screw to uh, screw my decking down. And these are uh, ACQ, which means they're approved for uh, treated wood. And these come in green and brown, and so I, you know, I'm using the brown wood, so I'm using the brown screws. If you're using the green treated wood, you'd use the green screws. So this uh, material can be stained eventually. Um, you can also just leave it. Uh, it depends on you know what you what you like to do with your decks. Um, I usually, you know, since I'm selling these homes, I usually leave it up to the homeowner. I I don't. Uh, I don't finish them you know this is going to be a covered deck so you know it's not going to be exposed to the weather it'll stand up quite well uh you know once you start staining this you kind of have to keep staining staining them you know it's an ongoing maintenance thing so you know it depends on the on the look that you want all right so i just want to explain a little bit more why why i'm doing these beams the way i'm doing them so um on oh, another thing is when you uh when you're put when you're cutting these these boards anytime you make a cut like here we have a cut so uh, you have to put uh, preservative on the end cut uh, same thing here you can kind of see where you know it's sort of bled back in here so I I uh, put the preservative on the end and I'm just using this is what I'm using here so this is a brown stain again you can get this in different colors but uh, you know and I just have a, a brush in here and as I as I go along, you know, I make my cuts. I just, you know, I just dip the end and, you know, get some preservative in the ends of the board so that water can't, you know, creep down in here and back into the board and rot it. So that's a very important thing to do. All right, now let's get back to the beams. All right, so the reason that I have set this beam up like this is I say if I do it this way, as opposed to doing it on the other side, I save myself one one ply. So if I put the beam underneath, I have to have this this board here would still be there, and then I have two of these uh, down here to accomplish the same task that I'm doing here by dropping this down. I would have to have three boards as opposed to just two. All right, which is what we have here. Here we have the this uh, header joist, okay, and then we have the two here. So total of three. One, two, three. Over here, we just have two. So, uh, today's price is a lumber. By doing it this way, I've saved myself $70 just by, by doing it this way instead. Um, it also gives us more room underneath, you know, not to have that beam hanging down like on the other side. Um, you know, another thing you'll notice with this, with the flush beam, is that all of our uh, footings and stuff are, you know, set this way, and they actually are past the edge of the uh, the header here okay if we did that same that did it the same way on here so you're saying well if you're gonna save wood why not do it the same on both sides so if we did that here I'm gonna try and line this up with the the footer of this concrete would be sticking out past the face of this header joist which would mean that when we put our skirting on we'd be running into the into the footer block there. This way, you can see if there, our skirting will be dropping right straight down here. We're gonna come down, we're gonna be on this side of, the, of that block by setting it back under like that. 
Okay, this is, we're, we're not doing it that with this particular job, but if you were adding additions, so let's say this was an addition we were adding here, and we wanted to run heating into this space, heat pipes, by having this up like this, you can see that um, we, we can run our heat pipes higher. We don't have to come underneath of the beam like we would have to do over there. So that's another reason why you would do it this way. All right, so I'm gonna carry on here with my with my decking and uh, I'll set up the uh, tripod here and we'll do a little bit of time lapse. Another thing that I'll mention here is that uh, you can see that I'm setting these um, deck planks here, you know, tight together, close together here. Um, some people will gap these, and now this is going to depend on the material that you're using. But this particular uh, material is what I would call wet or green. It's not kiln dried. If it was kiln dried material, then you would do something different. But this being the kind of material that it is, it will dry out and uh, even setting them close together with this uh, you know being wood it will dry out and it will expand you know it'll do that changes with the seasons and uh, this will uh, you know when it gets dried out in the hot sun you know these will open up you know a good quarter of an inch if you were to gap this now with a quarter inch gap uh, and it dries out then you're going to have yourself a half inch gap and that's a big gap you know, especially if you have ladies that uh, have high heel shoes and stuff you know they're gonna they're gonna drop into that crack there so that's what i'm doing with this particular material is you know i put them tight and you know even though they're tight up there you can see a gap kind of up there a bit of a gap at the next joint uh you know the this is not perfect material this is not really high end material you know this is sort of what we call economy and you know for for this kind of project it's a it's a good material for what we're doing here uh you know if you're building a million dollar house you might not want to use this kind of material but uh you know for what we're doing here it works just fine you know when these decks are are finished and you know a few years old they look great there's nothing wrong with them at all but uh, that's a little tip for you uh to you know avoid getting those really big gaps between your planks uh, you know set them tight when you're doing the installation just set them tight All right, so I just showed you in time lapse how I laid these last four rows here. And so I'm not sure how exciting that was for you. I can't imagine that it was that exciting, but uh, yeah, that's four more rows down. And so I, I think on the video, you saw me use this, this uh, strap here. You may be wondering what that's all about. Um, you know, these boards are kind of warped and twisted and you know, they kind of wiggle and you know, sometimes you have to pull on them in order to get them tight. And so this is a good way if you're a one-man operation like me. I just use a, you know, just use a tie-down strap. Just hook it over the board on one side. Hook it back over here. And then, you know, then just kind of uh, just wrap it, ratchet strap it, you know, to make it tight. It'll pull your board in to get it where you want it. And then, you know, then you just go ahead and screw it. Okay, so the, I'll show you my setup. What I'm doing here today, you're not seeing any saws here, right? So I'll take you inside and so I'm set up inside today and you know I've got my little pile of lumber here this is my deck boards that I'm using and you know I'm, I'm sawing on my uh, my miter saw here some people will call this a chop saw I hate that term this is a precision instrument and you know it cuts you know very fine degrees uh it's a lot of chop saw chop saw to me is something that's uh, very crude a very crude machine uh, you know these are precision machines so you know, i've got my little workstation set up here and you know i'm just bringing my uh boards in and you know just cutting them off there and so i i've laid i did my layout when i did my layout when i built the deck uh you know your boards these deck boards are a little bit longer you know i'm using eight foot boards so you know they're eight feet half an inch so what i'm doing is you know on the middle board which is the the long one eight feet um i'm trimming each end to get rid of the roughness on the ends 
and you know make a nice smooth cut and so that it also it hits the middle of that joist so if it was over eight feet you'd be over the center of the joist on each end and so i'm cutting that and then what i'm doing is i'm taking an eight foot board and cutting it in half you know for my my next uh piece here which is a four foot and putting the cut side in here and then just letting the rough side you know go over the edge there and i'll trim that later um you know same thing at the other end there and the next row where i have two eights so this row is is uh an eight in the middle and then a four and a four so my next row is a, a, an eight going this each way so from the middle all right so now here i've got my seam here and what i do is uh just on my miter saw in there i'm you know just making a nice straight cut just taking off a little bit you know like an eighth of an inch or whatever it takes to square it up get it nice and square and you know using the miter saw like that on the uh, the bench in there makes you know makes a really nice cut it's fast and it's perfect you know if you try to do this by hand you can you no, no reason why you can't but the uh, miter saw definitely makes a nicer job than doing it by hand and it's also quite a bit faster so you know i'm i'm doing that on each end i'm trimming the each end of one board and then i let the other end go wild you know and then again you know i'll be i'll be uh you know trimming this you can see how it's all uneven here all right i'm going to keep going here all right folks so i got my decking all laid here just kind of show you how it uh how it turned out and so here you can see now my 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 layout pattern so there's the uh four foot line i've staggered every other one here's the eight foot center of the deck and then we got another four foot over here and so now um, I've got two boards left to put in along the edge here. And um, uh, you can see how, uh, you know, I've got a full board here. And then I've got uh, something that's a little bit less than the full, full board. And so when I laid this out, you know, the, the size of my deck, you know, the length of it, I made sure that I was going to have a good piece left here. Um, you know, so I sized my deck accordingly so that I would have... You know this size of a piece in here uh, i was looking to have about a four inch piece um and you know you don't want to end up with like a one inch piece so if you just you know think ahead when you're laying out your deck you know you can have a nice piece left uh, left to fit in here now you can see this piece of flashing here I, this is a three by three uh just an aluminum flashing and uh it can it goes over the it goes over the edge of that three inch i'll show you down a little further down the way there but this, you know, protects the the deck from water getting down into into here between the deck and the home. And so now, you know, this is coming out over top of that little uh, three-inch flush beam, that two-ply flush beam that I have there. And so any water that gets down in here now will come out and then over the face of this beam. Okay. Uh, here it comes up the wall, and now when I put my siding on, my my building paper will come down over top of this. And any water that gets on that paper, that sheathing, will will shed down and, and then over over this edge here and then out underneath here. All right, and so I I've, I've trimmed it down for the uh, door. I'll show you over on the other door. Um, this right now, it's this door is sitting up. I mentioned to you before. I'm going to be cutting that one by four plate that's underneath them when I put the new door in. The new door is going to sit down right on the floor. Uh, it won't sit on this this one by four that we have here. Okay, that this one by four thing here is going to be gone. All right, so the the flashings are ten feet long. My deck is sixteen feet long. So you know, I this is this is where one piece ends up here, and you can kind of see now how this you know goes over the uh, two plies of the uh, the beam. And, you know, I'm just tacking this on with uh, roofing nails, you know, so just using, a, you know, a galvanized roofing nail to, to tack that on. I don't want to put too many nails into it. Uh, you know, once it's all together, it'll sit there um, and it won't, you know, it's not going anywhere. But um, you can see, you know, the, how the water's going to come down and over the edge here. And since I'm making a, 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 a splice, uh whenever you make a splice you want to have a, an overlap so this is going to overlap you know where they join here uh so that you get you know the water isn't going to get underneath there okay again here that's kind of bright sun but 
here you can see where I've the, the flashing is three inch and you know I've got two inches underneath my door here and so you know I've cut this down two inches here now when the new door goes in I will be placing what's called a counter flashing which will uh, go back underneath the door sill and out over over this flashing here all right so that does a couple things for us it's going to uh, create uh, a nice metal edge you know back in underneath that's not going to rot we'll also be caulking underneath the threshold when we install the door and that's going to be another video i'll show you how we install the exterior door we'll get quite detailed about that and uh, what it also does is it gives us a finished edge so when this is all done said and done here um, you're going to see you know you'll see one inch of this underneath the door because this material here is one inch and we've got two inches so there'll be one inch of it showing but it'll be nicely finished you know the brown metal uh, it just it just makes a nice finish all right now so as i said before i uh as i was putting putting my decking down i just let it go you know wild on the ends here and so what i did was my first board uh, that I put on I left a one inch overhang here and then my last couple boards um, I did the same thing all right because it's tough to get your saw in you know close to the building and then all I did was uh, you know took my uh, chalk line so just you know the chalk line was just a string with chalk on it and you know stretched it between you know this point and this point you know where I have my one inch and then I just you know snapped it and you know leaves behind this blue this blue chalk line here and so now I'll just be taking my my cordless uh, circular saw and just you know trimming this all off nice and straight and if I follow the line I'll have a nice straight line here right so I'm gonna do that and uh, we'll pretty much wrap up this video then in the next uh, segment here all right folks so that's as far as we're gonna go with this now um, you can see I've got that flashing install, installed all along the edge there and so now um, I don't have the last two boards to fit in there I'm, I'm short I, I had them but they were uh, they weren't good so I culled them out and I have to pick up a couple more to fit in there and then we'll be completely done with this part of the of the deck um, I've got it trimmed up show you along the edge here Just hosed everything down, washed all the dust off of it. But here I've got my my edge trimmed, so you can see now it's a nice, clean, straight edge. Uh, after I cut it, you know, I dabbed it with that wood preservative, you know, for the end cuts, and so now that's preserved. Any water, you know, that gets in there isn't going to rot that out. And so we're going to call this video a wrap. And so this is just the first part of this deck. Uh, eventually, we're going to be putting up a, a roof on top of this deck and so that's coming uh, you know we're gonna put some posts up here some six by six posts and uh, you know put a roof on top of it and you know eventually there's gonna be railings uh, before we, before we get all that though is gonna be skirting uh, that will be the next thing you know we're gonna get the skirting all in around here uh, so that'll be the next phase of this uh, so you know if you're interested in this and uh, would like to see how this kind of wraps up eventually months down the road uh, from now uh, you know subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that notification bell and you know as we put up new videos we'll be uh, you'll, you'll get notified so you can uh, keep up with us and uh, you know follow along with us on this job so I think the next video um, I'm gonna be getting into this this little trellis screen here so uh, get that done. I kind of need to get that done so that I can establish my elevation in here my grade uh, So, you know when I put these paving stones for my new uh, st my new stairs uh, Again, these are just temporary stairs. They're the old ones on from the old deck but um, you know I have to kind of get this mess cleaned up in here and So that I think that'll be my next uh, my next job here So stay tuned folks um, Yeah, if you like this video Hit that thumbs up, um, you know, share it. Uh, it really helps the uh, the channel. And when you do those little things, you know, those don't, that doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps us out to get exposure on YouTube. All right, folks, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.